What's up guys? Today we're in the Duke and Man garage and we're gonna teach you how to put BMX cranks on your fixie. Some of the reasons you're gonna wanna put BMX style cranks with a spine drive sprocket on your fixed gear, you can run a smaller chain wheel. When you do grinds or you do tricks, a lot of the time you're not gonna wanna be grinding on your chain, grinding on your sprocket, they also give you a lot more room so you can do tricks like crank arm grinds and stuff like that if you're crazy. They also are a lot more robust. You won't strip the square taper spines on your road, road style crank set. You also have the benefit of having no play. So a lot of the time if you guys run track crank sets or square taper crank sets, with the exception of some like the Paul components cranks, you can actually strip your entire crank arm or you can have all your chain ring bolts loosen because we do a lot of back and forth torque. That's a lot different to road biking or BMX biking. I highly, highly, highly recommend you to go spline drive as opposed to bolt drive BMX cranks. Bolt drive is like the worst thing you could possibly do where spline drive is like one of the best things you could possibly do. I guess the only downside would be it's really difficult to get large size spline drive sprockets. 40 tooth spline drive is probably the biggest you're gonna be able to find just regular spline drive sprocket unless you want to use a spider style spine drive sprocket. However, you do just run into the same issues of running a track crank set where your chain ring bolts can come loose and you'll get a lot of drivetrain play. So the first thing you're gonna need is a Euro to BMX bottom bracket adapter. My personal favorite is the Odyssey brand and make sure you buy the correct size bearing for your spindle. So here I have a 19 mil Euro to a BMX style bottom bracket converter and I have a resist spindle. And as you can see, it fits perfectly. Make sure when you buy it that it comes with the volcano washers. One side should be bigger than the other side. And it should also come with this infamous bottom bracket spacer that everybody says doesn't fit on anything, but trust me, there's a purpose. Your choice of a 48 spline sprocket. Um, here we have three. So this one is one that doesn't have a spider insert. There's also the style that has a spider insert where you can see on the back, it's actually two pieces. And then there's another, I would tend to say old school style, but I know Profile still makes one. It's a, it's called a Cruel. This one's by Volume, but they also make one by Profile. It's called a Spider. The only downside to these is that you tend to get a lot of play because they have an insert and they also have five more bolts that like to wear out. I will be running this brand new Spike 33 tooth Y6 sprocket. Supposedly it's raw, but looks pretty black to me. The last thing you're gonna need is a set of 48 spline cranks. These ones are chrome by Resist. You wish you had these? I wish I had more of these. So the tools you'll need, a big ass multi wrench. Secondly, you're gonna wanna use your crank installation tool after you're done installing your bottom bracket, put your sprocket on, etc. And finally, you're gonna need various size Allen keys depending on what uh, bolts your crank set comes with. Maybe a chain breaker if you're changing your ratio around. Spline drive sprockets tend to be a little bit smaller, so you're gonna run a smaller cog in the back to make up for it, and you'll need to cut your chain down. The most important thing is using a good lubricant when you install anything on your bicycle. Please, 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 please make sure you lubricate anything that has threads before you screw it into your bike, because if it ever wears out, you want to be able to replace it and remove it. First step you're gonna wanna do you're gonna put a pea-sized drop of grease, one on the Euro bottom bracket side, and then any residual, you wanna go ahead and also apply it to the threads in your frame. Again, pea-sized drop, you don't need to put too much. There's a right side and a left side to all of your Euro bottom brackets, and they both are reverse threaded, so it's like a pedal. You wanna make sure there's no resistance. And the easiest way is to spin it back and forth. You wanna just keep spinning it counterclockwise until it goes most of the way in. And remember guys, right now, finger tight. That's about good. So you always wanna be threading your bottom bracket in towards the back of your bike, towards your back wheel, not threading towards your front wheel. Step number two, your infamous spacer of the inside of your euro bottom bracket conversion anybody who tells you that you don't need this is lying to you so that you buy more of these stupid bottom brackets so use this sometimes they will not be the correct size for your frame and the way you substitute that is with 
little spacers. You just wanna tuck them inside. They should fit inside your bottom bracket, no problem. And you'll wanna be spacing your bottom bracket so that everything tightens flush. So inside your frame, it'll look like this with the other side, obviously. And you wanna make sure that there's no play in your inner spacer and there's no play against your bearings because that's what will make your bottom bracket last the longest time. For the master frame, you don't, you just need the regular vanilla spacer that comes with the Odyssey bottom bracket, so all good. The other thing you're gonna wanna do just to help yourself out later, you would want to apply fresh grease to the inside of this just to make your spindle slide through easier. You're gonna put this in the inside of your bottom bracket. Doesn't matter where it goes. Grab your other side of your Euro bottom bracket. Remember, towards the back of your bike. If it's smooth, you're all good. If it's crunchy, stop, reassess. Crunchy is bad. On the inside of the frame, you're gonna need to pick the spacer up so that you don't mush it into the other bearing on the inside. And then as you're lifting the spacer up, you wanna spin the bottom bracket counterclockwise for the right side of the bike. And eventually, the spacer will be held up all on its own. See, if your bottom bracket's not threading all the way in, it's probably because you have the spacer cocked and it gets stuck on either the top or the bottom of the inside of the converter. So I have everything lined up, everything feels okay. Spacer's inside. I'm gonna loosen it a little bit so I can align it perfectly. And then everything still now is finger tight and you wanna make sure it's finger tight. And now is a good time for you to wipe any excess grease off, because if you leave any excess grease or too much grease, it just collects a bunch of dirt. All right, next, you wanna grab your big wrench. You wanna adjust it, or if you're a baller and you have a wrench that's actually this big, probably better to use that. Because whatever you do, don't use vice grips or channel locks, because you'll just mar your frame, you'll mar your bottom bracket. Just go buy the $15 big ass wrench. You'll use it for other shit in your house anyway. Then you wanna do only about a quarter turn. Don't do any more, cause we haven't tightened the back side and you make, we wanna make sure to do it evenly. For the left side, you wanna go still towards the back of the bike. Half turn. Cool. And now your bottom bracket is installed. All right, next you grab your spindle. Lubricant is your friend. Piece size drop, everything. Make it gross, make it nasty. Boom. You wanna insert your spindle inside. If it doesn't go in easily, it's probably because your spacer is misaligned. So you can always stick your finger, pull the spacer up. Somewhere in the middle. Next step, and this is an important one. You have a big washer, you have a small washer. And most of the time, the small washer goes on the side that your sprocket is on. Small spacer goes on my drive side. Big spacer goes on the non-drive side. The side that your sprocket's gonna go on has more of the spindle sticking out than on the side that nothing will go on. And it has a little bit less because obviously you wanna keep the amount of spindle that goes in your crank arm as even as you possibly can. You wanna grab your sprocket you gonna grab your lube. Lube the splines in your sprocket so that you don't have a bad day later. So to start, I won't put any spacers in between because you might get really lucky and have a really good train line. Um, and you can always keep in mind, even if you put the sprocket on to your spindle, you can just pull your spindle out by tapping it with your hand. So it's not a big deal once you install this, the sprocket onto your spindle to check your chain line before and after. So you want to get your sprocket, set it on the spindle. And as you can see, because I put a whole bunch of grease on it, it slides on most of the way. Back and forward, back and forward, back and forward. We're getting immensely lucky here. Normally you have a terrible day doing this. Um, Pizza Man can tell you about that too. And you'll get to the point where it's pretty happy. And now what you can do is tap the side of the spindle Push it till it's flat square with the bottom bracket and you can check your chain line from the back. So I got really lucky. My chain line is dead on with this bracket, this cog, my originate hubs, immensely lucky. Most of the time, you're not as lucky as I am and your sprocket will either be really far this way 
We are really inside this way and you'll need to space it accordingly. But I got lucky, it's a good day for me today. All right, next step, the sprocket is on the right side of our bike. You wanna make sure you use the right side crank arm. There's a little letter on the back side of all spline drive cranks that will tell you which side is which. This is also your one and only chance to clock your sprocket in a direction that makes it look cool. I don't know if you want 33 on the bottom when your cranks are level, if you want Y6 on the bottom when your cranks are level. Pick whichever side of your sprocket you like the design of because that's where it's gonna stay. I'm gonna pick 33 on the bottom because I like how it looks. It'll cover the spike logo a little bit, so keep that looking fresh. Grab your crank, put it on your spindle. I already have a ton of grease in mine. For the camera, I'll put a little more grease. The more grease you put, the easier it'll come off. Slide the crank arm on, and then tap it on with your hand just a little bit so you can make sure that it's on the right way and you're not damaging any splines. Handy dandy crank installation tool. Thank you, Resist. Threads into the spindle. And then when you can anymore, you use your tool. You can use your big ass wrench, or I like using a socket wrench just cause it's faster. Crank away. Crank, crank, crank. And you wanna go until either the tool bottoms out or your cranks are in the middle of the spindle. So you should be able to use the other crank arm, other end of the spindle. You can always check it. So I got about that much spindle to go and I need to pull it a little bit more to the drive side still to make sure that they're both even. All right, and I reached the point where the tool bottomed out. So you're gonna switch your socket wrench to loosen, spin the tool out. You wanna try your best to get as much of the spindle inside your crank arm as you possibly can. Next step, grab your left side. Verify that it's your left side. Stick the crank arm right here up next to the spacer and you could verify whether or not you might need a little tiny spacer. I'm gonna go with two because I got plenty of room to spare on everything. Spacer, spacer. You wanna make sure that your cranks are level up and down. And this is an example of them not being level. Look level enough to me. You're gonna use the tool they use on the other side. Just repeat the same process. Back it out. Make sure your hands are covered in grease so you just ruin everything around you. This is a good time to verify that your spindle is in the middle of both your crank arms. My left side, it's a little bit shorter. I don't, I don't have it as flush as I do on the right side. So I'm actually gonna loosen this screw and I'm gonna use the tool again and tighten it to pull the spindle this way a little. So you can see this side of the crank arm has a little bit less of the spindle in it than the opposite side does. Thread your tool back in and pull your spindle a little bit more over so it's even with both crank arms. Check the front side. I'm gonna do a little bit more and call it good. Looks perfect to me. Now to finish up, last step, grab both your bolts, one on each side, thread them in and tighten them down. You got BMX cranks with a spline drive sprocket on your fixed gear bike. Get fixy. Subscribe, SMC Fixed Gear, we out.